Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. It really makes sense to limit our consumption of fructose. And, you know, these days uh, at the grocery store, we recognize that around 70% of the items sold at the grocery store have added sweetener. And by and large, that's fructose derived from high fructose corn syrup. We know that fructose consumption is, is associated with, for example, insulin resistance, weight gain, uh, increase in blood pressure. And now we are seeing research that relates fructose consumption to issues related to the brain, as in preclinical Alzheimer's. Let's take a look at a very interesting study. I'd like to begin our discussion with this important study that was published in the journal Alzheimer's and Dementia. The study is called Sugary Beverage Intake and Preclinical Alzheimer's Disease in the Community. And in this study, the researchers evaluated the amount of sugary beverage that uh, these individuals, uh, close to 5,000 individuals, consumed by using what's called a food frequency questionnaire. In other words, these individuals would simply write down the foods that they would normally eat. And in addition, uh, these uh, people underwent neuropsychological examination to evaluate their brain function, and also some of them, around 3,800, underwent uh, an evaluation of their brains using an MRI scan. And these are individuals that were part of the Framingham Heart Study. And the, the correlations that they found, I think, are very uh, important, and let's review them. They found that in comparison to those who did not drink these sugary beverages, that those who did, those who would, for example, consume one or two a day, had the, uh, a brain aging score that was equivalent to about 1.6 years greater brain aging. If those individuals drank two or more sugary beverages per day, that was equivalent to two years uh, of added aging to the brain. And as it specifically relates on the MRI scan, looking at the volume of the brain, and specifically the hippocampus, the brain's memory center, an area that tends to degenerate in Alzheimer's disease, here's what they found that in comparison to less than one a day, having one to two uh, sugary beverages per day or greater than two was associated with some pretty dramatic shrinkage of the hippocampus. And when we look at function, I think it's really quite dramatic that having one or two uh, sugary beverages per day was associated with a decline of logical memory delayed recall scores, uh, you know, an important neurocognitive function, by about 5.8 years. In other words, it was what you would expect to see in somebody about 5.8 years older. And if they uh, were found to be drinking greater than two of these beverages per day, their delayed recall scores were equivalent to individuals 11 years older. When we look at the brain volume, again, consuming three or more sugar-sweetened soft drinks each week, that's week, not day, was associated with a total brain volume decline that equilibrated to about 2.6 years of decline, and logical memory immediate score equilibrated to about a 13-year decline. In other words, what you might see in a person 13 years older. So their conclusion is that higher consumption of sugary beverages is associated with smaller total brain volume, poorer episodic memory, and smaller hippocampal volume, especially for those uh, consuming higher levels of fruit juice. And this is a pattern of findings consistent with preclinical Alzheimer's disease. And let me remind you that Alzheimer's is a disease for which there is no pharmaceutical treatment. Further, these findings were striking given that they were evident in middle-aged people and were observed even after they made corrections for various confounding factors. So I think we really have to think about our sugar consumption and that by and large the foods that are sweetened are sweetened these days with high fructose corn syrup, in other words, fructose. And uh, I think the study was interesting because it really called out uh, this notion of the value of drinking fruit juice or perhaps, as they called out, the threat of the fructose that is found in fructose. They made that actually very clear. So let's look at fructose for just a moment. And again, recognize that when added sugar appears in the various processed foods that make up 
about 70% of what you find on the grocery store shell, shelves, that the main component of added sugar is fructose. Why? Because it's cheap and it's much sweeter than glucose. Uh, fructose, we know, increases insulin resistance. That's bad for the brain. Uh, that is a uh, precursor to uh, diabetes, certainly contributes to weight gain and obesity. We know that fructose directly compromises the function of the energy producers within our cells. This leads to increased production of damaging chemicals called free radicals. That's not good for the brain. Fructose increases a process called protein glycation. That means binding of sugar to protein, and that increases the production of the inflammatory mediators. And so this is a direct, then, relationship between fructose and increased levels of inflammation. And finally, fructose increases the production of something called uric acid. And as we move forward uh, over the next year, two years, we're going to really focus in on why this matters a whole heck of a lot. It turns out that uric acid is very important as it relates to things like blood pressure, uh, body lipids, inflammation, certainly brain health. And so the question is, how do we make uric acid? Well, as we've just described, uric acid is made from fructose, and it's also made from alcohol. When we metabolize fructose, metabolize alcohol, we take our ATP, our energy currency, we convert it into AMP, and ultimately that is metabolized into uric acid. Now there is one other uh, way to get into this pathway, and that's through the consumption of purines. Purines are the a breakdown product of uh, RNA and DNA, and foods that are high in purines are foods like sardines, uh, organ meats like liver, uh, brain, um, lung, heart, all those things that are called sweetbreads, pancreas, uh, that you know we now need to consider through the mechanism of purines feeding into uric acid, uh, maybe something we might want to limit. So fructose and purines in the diet tend to uh, augment or increase uric acid, and uric acid is associated, as we are going to learn, with increased development of fat around our organs. We call that visceral adiposity, a surefire way to increase inflammation. It elevates our triglycerides. It increases directly the production of inflammation. It augments our insulin resistance, paving the way for diabetes. Uh, it, therefore, is involved directly in increasing blood sugar, also through increasing what is called gluconeogenesis, the, the creation of blood sugar. And finally, it's directly involved with damaging the function of the lining cells of our blood vessels. We call this endothelial dysfunction. Now, when you consider these, and there are many more uh, events that occur when we have high levels of uric acid, it's then really quite easy to understand how elevation of uric acid can correlate uh, with, for example, shrinkage uh, of the brain uh, in people who consume a lot of sugary beverages. Well, this really uh, raises some interesting questions, doesn't it, about the role of fructose in brain health, something we absolutely need to be paying attention to and understanding that one of the relationships is how fructose becomes metabolized to uric acid. There's a lot more information that we need to understand about uric acid. We know, for example, that quercetin and vitamin C can help lower uric acid. And what we've learned in this presentation is that by limiting our fructose consumption and cutting back on our purine consumption and alcohol consumption as well, that we can have a meaningful impact in terms of bringing uric acid levels back to where they belong. Now, we are going to be exploring these relationships uh, and so many more uh, in the book Drop Acid, which will be published February the 15th, 2002. The Secret Key to Losing Weight, Controlling Your Blood Sugar and Achieving Extraordinary Health. If you'd like to learn more about that book, uh, here is the website to visit, and that is dropacidbook.com.